All right, let me give you a warning that should terrify anyone who's paying attention. Donald Trump seems to be setting up to manufacture a crisis to then justify taking emergency powers. This is not paranoia. It's a playbook. It's a playbook we know. It's as old as authoritarianism itself. And Trump nominees have already admitted this is what's being planned. They've admitted it in small parts. Now, history is full of examples in the United States, globally, where strongmen leaders have exploited or outright fabricated emergencies to consolidate power. With Trump's return and his latest plan for the mass deportations, we have to acknowledge the writing is on the wall. I want to start with Trump and his incoming border czar, Tom Homan. Homan has already hinted at one such crisis. We've talked about this before. They've openly stated they have this intent to deploy red state National Guard units into blue cities and blue states if those states and cities refuse to cooperate with mass deportations. Those cities and states have already said we're not going to cooperate with mass deportations. Think about what that means. Armed troops from right wing states are going to march into liberal strongholds, bypassing state and local governments entirely. This is the kind of authoritarian power grab that we've seen in some of the darkest chapters of history. And of course, the chaos and the resistance that will result from the stunt will then be used to justify more crackdowns. Look at how crazy things got when the I don't know. You know, West Virginia National Guard went into New Jersey. We've seen this sort of thing in our own recent history. After 9 11, some of you may be uh, too young to remember, fear was weaponized to push through the Patriot Act, which massively expanded government surveillance powers with very little debate because those who questioned it were framed as not patriotic or having the interests of our enemies. I remember when that very short debate took place. Americans were simply told this is necessary, necessary for national security, and it opened up the door to warrantless spying on ordinary citizens. That's the sort of crisis based policy making which shows just how quickly you can exploit fear to dismantle rights under the guise of safety. Now, imagine a Trump led government creating, amplifying a crisis not just to pass laws, but to seize power outright. History repeats itself when we don't recognize the pattern. And this is a playbook that's not new. They're just kind of rewriting it for 2025. 1970s Chile in South America. You basically saw the same tactic. Augusto Pinochet overthrew a democratically elected government, used claims of economic collapse, societal chaos to justify martial law. Once in power, silences dissent crushes unions, rewrites the rules to stay in charge. And you don't have to go back to the 70s. In Turkey, President Erdogan used a failed coup attempt in 2016 to justify sweeping emergency powers. And it was all under the guise of we've got to root out the conspirators. But they jailed journalists. They purged judges. They restructured the entire government to cement authority. If it sounds familiar, Trump was talking about it in the interview we looked at earlier when he told Kristen Welker in that NBC News uh, gong show, uh, everybody who voted to impeach me uh, or sent to make criminal referrals from the January 6th committee, they should all be in prison. And this concept that Trump and Tom Homan are rolling out, the, the non-compliant blue states will be punished. It's the classic authoritarian power grab as a result of chaos that they created. Now, here's the danger as if it isn't obvious. It doesn't have to be a real crisis. When I say, oh, Trump will send red state National Guards into blue states, it'll generate chaos. And then Trump can use that chaos to say we need to do A, B, C, D. Trump has always thrived on completely manufactured drama. His presidency was this rotating cast of villains. It was the migrants. It was the media, the election officials. And he used it to keep his base in a state of perpetual fear. And now he's got Tom Homan by his side and you can hear the rhetoric now. You know, the blue states are obstructing justice. They're harboring criminals. We have to act. They're writing the narrative down. Uh, uh, and let's not forget that he's tested the waters. He flirted with martial law after losing the 2020 election. It was dismissed as fringe when it didn't happen. 
but a lot of his followers liked it. A lot of his followers said, no, it was stolen from him. He should have declared martial law. Michael Flynn, Sidney Powell, they were floating it and Trump didn't shut it down. So when he returns to power, he will likely see the moment uh, as one where he doesn't want to miss the opportunity again. And my guess is he's not going to hesitate next time. Trump's own words and plans like the home and National Guard deployment are telling us what to expect. So what do we do? <clears throat> this is the tough part. First of all, we have to be relentless in exposing the tactics that Trump and his allies are preparing. Every mention of National Guard deployments, every insinuation of a crisis, we have to call it out. We have to counter it with the truth before it all takes root. Will corporate media do this or are they going to play the, the both sides game where they'll host a debate where each side of the authoritarian takeover will, will give their opinion as to whether it's all a good thing. Which way is corporate media going to go? I don't know. Secondly, we have to keep pressure on local and state governments. The blue states and the blue cities have to be prepared to push back legally and politically against federal overreach. They, if Massachusetts and New York and New Jersey, if they know that the red state armies will be coming for the deportations. They have to be ready. You've got to build coalitions with other states, reinforce local laws that protect against abuse, ensure that the courts are ready to quickly respond. And then finally, we need to prepare for the long game. That means supporting investigative journalism to uncover abuses, funding civil rights organizations that will challenge unconstitutional actions organizing at every level, local, state, national, where we have the numbers to make sure that we don't get caught flat footed, because if it ends up being a surprise, you'll know everybody failed because they're telling us now what they plan to do. We have to stay ahead of Trump. If there's anything that's to our advantage, it's that Homan's going out there and telling us what they plan to do. Trump has already told us through his words and through his nominations of Kashat Patel and Pam Bondi, what they plan to do. And it'll be a second Trump term of retribution and revenge, not justice. If anything, that gives us a head start. Will the blue states and the blue cities be ready? That's the real question. The best gifts should really feel like they were picked out just for you, which is why I love Aura digital picture frames during the holidays, because you can give it to mom or grandpa. You can give them the same gift, but personalize it with their favorite pictures. I've given these to so many family members now. Sometimes I'll preload it with pictures of my daughter, or sometimes I'll preload it with different things. Depends who I'm giving it to. It is a really great gift. Instead of, you know, cufflinks, okay, fine. Socks. This is really great. Uh, the New York Times called Aura the best digital photo frame. Very easy to set up and connect. You add the photos, you add the videos, connect to your photo library on your phone, you upload the ones you want. And if you're giving it as a gift, you can personalize the frame with preloaded photos so it's ready when they hook it up. Save on the perfect gift by visiting AuraFrames.com to get $35 off Aura's best selling Carver Matte Frames by using the promo code PACMAN at checkout. The link is in the description.